And um, I continue to get requests all the time to do interviews uh, for radio and sometimes for film. Uh, that I'm cutting down on too. You know, you don't get paid for these kind of things. <laughs> don't tell everybody that's what I'm thinking about. But, you know, it's time consuming after a while. Everybody wants to interview about culture in 900 hours a day. So I do turn a lot of them down, but I have been, uh, I have done over the years many interviews, uh, BBC Radio, BBC Television, uh, WNYC Radio, BGO, of course, uh, which I tend not to turn down because I have a good relationship with them. Um, I have National Public Radio quite a bit. The National Public Radio, the only one I regularly am doing now is a series for, um, a series for, uh, called the New Jazz Archive, and they do a show once a week, and they, they like to interview me about once a month, and they've made it easy for me. They actually sent me a Zoom and said, we'd like you to use this. We'll call you on the phone. You can record yourself. You don't have to go to a studio. They, they really went out of their way to make it doable for me, so I said, all right, that'll do. At my house just, uh, what's today, uh, Friday? Just uh, Tuesday was Sam Pollard, great guy, he's a friend of mine, who is a professional colleague, I guess, uh, not a close friend, but a good guy. He is Spike Lee's editor for the past 15 years, and he also makes films on his own. He's doing a documentary about Train, and he was at my house Tuesday interviewing me about Coltrane. So that, obviously, I'm going to say yes to. And um, I think, actually, instead of doing, can I switch to uh, DVD or uh, video whenever I want, uh, DVD or CD easily? DVD is in the computer now. Uh, can I just, do I need to take it out to put in a CD? No. Because, uh, oh, okay. Put CDs down. Oh, okay. Then let me do that then, because I've been waiting to put on these CDs. So let me just play you just a few quick little snippets. This is an example of one of the radio shows at this so-called uh, New Jazz Archive. I'll just play this right from the beginning. You'll hear a sample of what it sounds like. I'm going to rapidly go through a few CDs. Maybe you can stay here with me All for right. just a minute. Get the others. So this is NPR Radio. Jazz Connections is brought to you by Chateau Chantel Vineyard, Winery, and Bed and Breakfast on Old Mission Peninsula in Traverse City, Michigan. On the web at ChateauChantel.com. This is Jazz Connections. I'm Jeff Haas. The amazing thing is that it was so popular. I mean, if you listen to this album, this is not pop music. It's a very intense, totally uncompromising, experimental jazz album. This is Lewis Porter. He's a jazz historian and musicologist from Rutgers University. He's one of the world's go-to guys on the life and music of sax legend John I think he should be running away from the guy, but that's a sample. He does a good show, and as I say, they made it easy for me. That's syndicated nationally on a bunch of NPR stations. Okay, let's put on this one. Now, I promised you an example of my interviews with Dave. These are never going to be, you're never going to hear these anywhere else, because these are, these are published in the book. And the idea is you'll see the written transcript. I just picked this because it's a not him talking about something obvious like Miles, it's him talking about how everybody used to smoke. Just give you an idea of the kind of stuff that's in the book that's not the obvious stuff, you know. Yeah. Okay. I think I might even like to pull a little 
said it might have like Paul Moore on camera. I'm trying to remember. I there for a while, sobriety is a lot of college. I never, it, it was never a thing that I enjoyed, and I was never hooked on it. I just did it right. because it was part of our life. Right. It was really a, yeah. To think of all the smoke that we lived through. Yeah, that is true. Right. That we lived through up until the last well, five years. That's right. You can't smoke in front of you, right to your face. It's Let true. alone the normal person, but a club situation. Oh, the club situation. So it's thick sometimes. No ventilation. No ventilation. He says, with no ventilation. And, um, I also do uh, still a lot of guest speaking all over the place, but uh, more, uh, more and more I try to, if it's out of town speaking, I try to combine it with uh, per performance opportunities. Um, and uh, usually that works out. Or, or this uh, April, next April, for example, I'll, I'll be the keynote speaker at a conference at VU, which is going to be about jazz, criticism, and politics. Could be interesting. My friend Nat Hemptoff is supposed to come up for that. And um, I'm going to be the keynote speaker, and I'll be performing something with some group of VU faculty or students. I don't even know what it is yet, but uh, that should be fun. And um, I have been in recent years to Spain, Italy, Germany, um, the Netherlands, Finland, where I was a guest at the Sibelius Academy, speaking and performing, again, in most of these cases. France, uh, where I played with Dave Lehman, we did a duet concert in Tours, France, and uh, we each gave lectures about train. So this is kind of, a lot of times, they're in combination with things like that. And um, just in the past month, I, I was the synthesizer player on Wycliffe Gordon premiere that was at Miller Hall about a month ago, uh, less than a month, I guess it was. And uh, Dave Lieben and I made a CD with uh, Mark Rebo, who's also an old friend of mine, if you're familiar with Mark. I brought him here last year to play with me. Mark and I go back to about 1988, and Dave I've known since 1980. Uh, so in terms of recording, it's funny, things just happened. This was uh, on an Italian label called Altra Suoni. It's uh, actually Swiss-Italian. And uh, I, was, I played live at the Siena Jazz Festival, and I found out, after, uh, just before we played, I think I found out, that they record everything at a very high professional level. And I s felt that it went pretty well, and, then, and so I said, is there a way to get this released? And uh, there was a connection with this label, Altra Suoni. Uh, since then, I've done other things for Altra Suoni. This is a two piano, and in some cases, two synthesizers, it's called Transformation. This is with Mark Rossi, who's a piano professor at Berkeley, an old friend of mine. Um, this is Dharma Jazz, which is the only kind of regular band that I play, and everything else is freelance stuff. But this is a, an ongoing band with Bottle Roy on tablas, myself on pianos and synth, and uh, another percussionist, and Freddie Bryant, who's a terrific guitar, if you don't know Freddie. And this is the latest, which is duets with David Rothenberg, who teaches across the street at NJIT. He's a madman on the clarinet, like totally free wild craziness. And I play synth on it, and it's totally free wild crazy stuff. Kind of fun, though. And I must say, the first review in Jazz Times said it's very accessible craziness. So maybe it's not too bad if you're not into craziness. Uh, but so far, I haven't had too many uh, uh, CDs that I just planned and made a CD. Maybe there will be something. This one with Dave, I guess, is in that vein. Here, for example, is, uh, let's see, here is uh, a blues track. And the engineer just happens to uh, keep everything on, he videotapes everything. Maybe I'd like to do a different track, but you know what, it'd take too long to find it. So if I just click on it, it should come up, right? Should. Let's see what happens here. Uh, this, oh, it can't open it? No, you don't have it Um. Yeah, I might not be able to. Uh, in any case, that CD will be out in, um, uh, uh, approximately around the same time as the book, January, February, there's a major label interested in it that I'm not supposed to mention the name until they actually say definitely yes. And, uh, and um, you can see me playing with Dave on my website because we were right here at Rutgers and our good friend Mark Papiani, as usual, did a brilliant job documenting that and so we put up a few 
clips on YouTube and I just uh, synced them to the website. Oops. And uh, uh, our own graduate students, including our work study students, have been good enough to help me keep my website going. So, um, for example, this is one with my good friend Rudy Royston that we did. I'll just show you this as a substitute for whether or not we couldn't get going. to do as a substitute for the CDs for now. And last, and I'm going to say not least, since I have a colleague who's such a distinguished composer, all my life I've been interested in composition. Those of you who study with me know that I'm very deep into classical music. I have, at home, if you've been to my house, I have a, a, about this many, I have about this much of a collection. You know my collection. It goes, probably goes all the way around three walls in this room, but one of those walls is classical scores and LPs, so I, and, some, and a lot of CDs too. So. Uh, finally, I found some time to compose, and I've uh, written a concerto for Dave Lieben Plus Orchestra that looks like they're going to do at Berkeley College next fall. I've done a piece for violin and orchestra, which is a tribute to Messian that they're looking at right now in Germany. I'm, I won't mention that ensemble, but if they agree, it's a pretty distinguished ensemble. And I have a string quartet uh, that a string quartet is looking at, and the beginning of the string quartet, if I have it queued up right, goes like this. This is played by the synthesizer, just to give you a sound. Of And then that theme comes back and moves on to some other, going to a pizzicato section. So, looks like your uh, faculty here are keeping kind of busy. <laughs> I think you would agree. We're all into about 5,000 different projects. Thanks for your attention. Any uh, quick? Thank you. <laughs>